we're going to depart from the norm at this spring concert and bring you into a little bit of the inner workings of the organization, some things that you may not know about. The organization for many, many decades has played concerts for younger people than the ones even on stage. This goes all the way back to the, at least the 1930s when the Saturday morning dress rehearsal was opened up to school children. They would bus them in from very far away. We now do those on a weekday during the school day in February and in March. Uh, there are two days, one played by our conservatory orchestra, one by this orchestra. And on those two days, in four concerts, we see 10,000 school children in this auditorium. And not only do we see them, but we play real meaningful repertoire for them. We've, this year we played Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks in its entirety, and some of the Firebird Suite and the Brahms Hungarian Dance. But also, uh, the musicians get a chance to, in their own way, interact with the students by preparing uh, a demonstration of their instrument for the members of the audience. Now, most orchestras that do educational concerts uh, do instrument demonstrations, but they've become a rather stale ritual in a lot of professional orchestras, but not so here. They're kept fresh and vibrant because the musicians invest very much of their time and energy into making them special. Uh, they choose the repertoire. They either arrange it themselves or with the help of a teacher arrange it. This is also a byproduct of our music theory class, which is taught uh, to all the students in the younger ensembles in this organization. Uh, so, in this way, they share with the young people the fact that, other than the repertoire that they love so much that we perform on these concerts, their taste in music is very similar to the general public. So, without further ado, let's introduce you to the sections of the Portland Youth Philharmonic, starting in the woodwind section, which is in the center of the orchestra, and our flute section. Also in the woodwind section, the first of our two double reed sections, the oboes and English horn. In the second row of woodwinds, we first have the clarinet section. And finally, the bass member of the Woodwind family, also a double reed instrument, the bassoon.
They're, they're always playing that when I walk around. Um. <laughs> we move now to the back of the orchestra and the brass section, and we'll start with the uh, trombones and tuba, or the low brass. put one of them out front and they go all Hollywood on you. Uh, in front of them are our trumpets. Finally, along the back wall, our horn section. It's true, most of them look very uh, young and manly, but deep down they're all princesses, clearly. <laughs> On the other side of the back of the stage, we have our kitchen, or percussion section, as they're better known, and uh, they have something for us to do. Also, over here, our timpani. who is the loudest and the most extrovert has to clean up afterwards, so I think they won that competition. Uh, we're going to move to the string section now, and we actually have two soloists within our string section. We're going to start with the harp. Because Mr. Copeland also wrote a piano part for the last piece on the program, we have a piano today.
we're going to go to the other side of the stage and let the instruments get smaller as they go along and uh, start with our wonderful double bass section. So many things I could say, <laughs> but I need to keep this job. So we're going to move on to the cello section. <laughs> On this side of the stage, we have our viola section. Finally, our largest group of instruments, violins, first and seconds. <laughs> 